So this video is gonna show you how to go from this to this. This is just stage one, okay? There's still more work to be done on this to really f uh, finish it off and make it look more three-dimensional, okay? So first of all, uh, make sure that you have your picture of your sphere up on a screen or printed out in front of you so that way you could reference it. All right, I've obviously laid out my palette here, okay, with my star my styrofoam palette, which is a you know good for now. Now, one of the things that I'm gonna do is with using complementary colors, uh, and which by the way I'm using blue and orange. Uh, my violet was bad, so. Um, I didn't use it, but I'm using blue and orange and white, okay, because I'm using those complementary colors. So the first thing to do is, especially with acrylic, it's always a good idea to kind of lay out your colors. Where are they going to go? Remembering that acrylic is going to dry a lot quicker than watercolor, okay, so, or more permanently. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to be painting my sphere blue. Now, I'm going to add a little bit more water to it, more than I normally do, because I want this to flow easily and not be too dark. One of the nice things about acrylics is their ability to be worked in layers. Another nice thing about acrylic is because when you're working on the canvas is it doesn't bleed into itself. Meaning if I'm going, what you're gonna see in a moment is I'm going to go ahead and paint some other areas in here right next to it, okay? So for example, the tabletop, I'm gonna make blue as well, but you'll notice that it doesn't mix in with the other uh, with the other blue, so it doesn't make like watercolor does. So I'm coming down here, and what I'm going to do is go a little bit darker near the horizon line, just so that way there's a distinction between the sphere and the background. Don't forget, I've got this side to do as well, okay? And right now, I'm just going straight from the tube, meaning none of my paints are, are mixed in. I'm just putting down a ground, as it were, no pun intended. So that's just a base. I'm going to wind up painting on top of this base later, okay? And starting to go in a little bit darker. Next thing is I'm going to go ahead and make some orange above here. So this is going to help this determine different spaces. So I've got my tabletop, and then I've got my wall. And again, like I said earlier, that's one of the nice things about acrylic is that they doesn't necessarily, excuse me, sorry about that, doesn't necessarily bleed into itself, okay? And keeping it wet allows me to blend it out a little bit more. And again, I'm working in light layers. Uh, other artists like to work a little bit thicker right away. And that's fine. It's, it's one way to do this um, as a beginning acrylic painter it's I have found it is easier to work in light layers than to work in thick layers because you could always get darker getting lighter is the harder part it is possible but it is a harder part it is more of a challenge okay so there we go I'm not too concerned about the textures I think that's fine that works out really well beautiful okay so I've got my colors uh, blocked it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually start to mix in where my shadows and my highlights are going to go in my sphere based off of my picture. So I notice that there's a there's going to be a shadow right in here. So I'm going to add some orange. Now notice that my sphere is still a little wet, which is good. That's fine. That allows the orange to mix in with the blue. I don't necessarily want the blue to become orange. I want it to become a darker blue or or more of a muted blue because of the color's complement. So that means that I'm not just going to leave it like this, right? I'm going to eventually mix in some more blue. I'm going to pull this out a little bit. I'm going to come in here with a little bit more blue. My blue is a little bit watery on my palette, so I'm gonna make sure to use a little bit more uh, or charge up the brush a little bit more so you see how it starts to change, All right? So I'm gonna just create a nice little base here. Being very careful here, not too careful though. I'm not trying to make this perfect yet. Just trying to lay out my values and my colors. I'm gonna go ahead and take some white 
for the highlight because there's a highlight right in here. A little bit more white. Can grab a little bit more blue. I do tend to clean off my brush, especially these early stages, a lot more because I want more of the mixing to be occurring on the on the canvas, not so much on my palette or on my brush. Later on, as we start to get into painting a little bit more, I won't clean off my brush nearly as much, but that's as I start to get more and more advanced and start to get a little bit more thicker with the paint. So that's pretty decent for now. Okay, that's a good start. My next step is the cast shadow here. The cast shadow is going to be the color of the table. That's why I painted right over it with all the blue. And it's only going to get a little bit darker because of the orange, okay? So it's gonna be a darker blue, more muted blue with the orange. All right, and that's a good foundation. So I could go ahead and let this dry and I'd be fine with it. Um, not necessarily too big of a deal. If you notice, that's pretty much kind of like what I've done here as well. So you can see that it's on its way. All right, one of the things that I could do as well is I could darken this area up. And you know what, I think I'm gonna do that. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some blue. It's a little bit of blue to my orange here. That was a little bit too much. Not a big deal. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to be able to go back in with a little bit more orange. I'll paint it up. I'll clean up that edge in a second. Okay, I like to use my flat, especially when I'm starting a bigger brush. Because I, you know, smaller brushes, are, sorry about that, are better for smaller details. So now I'm going to add in some more orange. A lot thicker. And I'm going to pull it up. So that way it looks like a darker orange, not a orange becoming blue. That's the key thing is that the colors are making each other darker and duller, not necessarily changing into each other. You'll notice that I'm using less water on this area here because I really want the color to change, I want the value, is a better way to say it, the value to actually alter, then I do want the color to change. Come up against, and it's cleaning up my edges in here. So it starts to create a little bit more of a greater sense of depth behind the sphere, and you can see the edge of the sphere a little bit more. All right, having a little bit of fun with that. I'm gonna leave that alone, and eventually I'll go a little bit darker. With, uh, with my or a little bit deeper with my orange to make the color stand out more, maybe add a little bit more of a highlight towards the top. All right, that's step one.